This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. With licensed psychologist and guest John Delatory. The defense of Karen Reed has been making some interesting accusations against the Alberts, against uh, anyone other than Karen Reed uh, that may have been around that evening. And understandably so, that is their job. Uh, I, I want to play this clip and I want to get uh, your take on how the jury might be taking this, might be reading uh, how the defense uh, is is acting and, and exactly uh, how that's going to play out at the end of the day when they have to make their decision. Let's take a look at this. Mr. Lally said that there was, that the defense had filed a motion to ask for the phones to be preserved. And anything else? Um, that's, what I rem- that's what I remember him saying. Did you volunteer that, oh my goodness, I just upgraded my phone last week conveniently. I don't have that phone anymore. No. You didn't say that to Mr. Lally? No. You just took the information that he gave you and hung up the phone and what about your business? Yes. Without notifying him that the very phone that he had just ordered you to preserve had just been destroyed days earlier. No, the phone wasn't destroyed. I upgraded the phone. You have a phone? That's an iPhone? Years. How many times have you upgraded your iPhone? M- multiple times. Every single time you upgrade it, you know that the, the, phone subs, uh, the phone prior, the data's destroyed on it, correct? Um, usually my contacts come over and my photos come over. So, so that's a backup. No, I don't have, I don't, I don't think I have that on backup, but okay. Irrespective, you didn't tell Mr. Lally that you had gotten rid of that phone. I was not asked that and I didn't tell him that. I see. You felt like if you weren't asked that, you didn't need to volunteer it, even though the conference call was specifically about preserving your phone pursuant to a a judge's order. Correct? What was the question? You didn't offer to Mr. Lally that you had gotten rid of the very phone that he was telling you had to be preserved due to a judge's order. I did not. It's a lot of gotcha moments but but there doesn't seem to be a lot of gotcha in it the the witnesses seem to be pretty authentic um i'm not i'm personally not getting a, a lot of vibes of someone lying i'm getting very matter of fact here's what happened and and i upgraded my phone before they said i had to keep it i didn't volunteer that i did that um and, and it, there, there's there's clip after clip of of this these kind of gotcha moments that just don't really seem to have a whole lot of gotcha to them what's your thought on how that's playing out to the jury i think for, I think for the most part, I think it's playing out the same way that's playing out for you, Tony, where mm-hmm. it's like you, you can tell that they're trying to get that Perry Mason moment. But <laughs> when you really consider what was being asked and the and the answer that the witness was giving, right, when you really stop to think about it, which they can't at that moment, right? Because sure. when it's happening, when it's testifying, right, it's 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 happening a lot faster in person than it's actually happening for those of us viewers that are just watching it. Mm-hmm. So at the, at the moment you you could, as a juror, you're probably feeling, Oh man, like something, something's really happening here. And then once you had an opportunity to really think about it, then you can start seeing, but well, I mean, none of, none of this, none of this gets me any closer to assuming that Karen Reed is innocent. Yeah. Right. It does no, like none, none of this is moving the needle. All it's trying to do is try to, uh, you know, uh, make the witness less credible, but I don't know that they're really successful. I don't, I don't know that what happened was really as successful as they wanted it to be. Yeah. It, it's not like the narrative, it just as we get more and more into it, it just doesn't make sense. The, the narrative of, of the conspiracy that everybody, you know, plotted and they beat him up and they threw him out there just piece after piece after piece just does not add up, but they kind of just keep going hard at it. And they're good attorneys, and maybe this would play well and better in a different area of the country. But to to what's going on here, these just kind of seem like you know regular salt of the earth people that are like, no, this is not what happened. They were all buddies with John O'Keefe. This doesn't really make any sense to go down this road. And and I, I, I am a jury of their peers from that area of the country. I, I don't think the harshness is is going to to bode well for Karen. No, and I, I think. I think that they probably thought too hard about this conspiracy theory aspect. I think what they should have done was that 
there was a panic that had set in, like an accident had occurred Mm -hmm. and a panic had set in. And then human nature was just to kind of cover something up altogether because that's what they know how to do because they're all law enforcement. Mm -hmm. The, the idea, though, that was originally presented as it was presented was that there was a, a, a long line of conspiracy theories like the, like every that the conspiracy theory, like this whole thing was just planned. Mm-hmm. And I, these aren't the witnesses that they have and the cross examination that they're doing. These aren't the good witnesses for for that, because you're right, they don't come across as these nefarious kind of you know, always thinking about, you know, the 10 moves ahead and and the criminal master. These guys don't seem like that. These guys seem like all they do is they wake up in the morning, they go do their job. And then they come home at night, they drink a beer, they watch the game, and then they do it all over the next day. Mm -hmm. And those those aren't good witnesses to cross-examine. If your theory is that there's this massive conspiracy, if your theory is, is that there's a panic, then these are not the correct questions to be asking Mm -hmm. For, for these kinds of things. Yeah, it seems like the approach is very, very off. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.